Let me know when you're ready for another one. It's ready. I'm excited. Yes. All right, oh. let's do it. Today we're in Kenya, leaving Mombasa and heading into the countryside for a village food feast like no other. Wendy and I are joining Mama Kadza and the Guriyama people, a Bantu Kenyan community who occupy the Kenyan coast. This area, the people are known for being very friendly and hospitable. This is a place where locals like Mama Kadza raise turkeys but never eat them. Until today. Now you're going to have all these delicious turkeys walking around. It's going to be so tempting to cook them. Yeah. <laughs> From the protein. The best part is you have no idea what any part is. To the booze. Oh. <laughs> I already feel my headache tomorrow. <laughs> so pack your machetes, hug a turkey, and prepare yourself for Kenyan food like you have never seen before. Before we dive deep into village life here, we're going to get a quick taste for local life at the local market. Here, eating local is not a challenge, as vendors bring their produce, fish, and snacks from nearby villages. And already, something tasty has caught my eye. I think school just got out, because mm -hmm. there's about 50 kids around us, but then they also curious and equally freaked out. If I make eye contact, they back away. Hi, <laughs> how's it going? Do you see what I'm saying? Kenyan potato chips. For an affordable price, this lady is filling bellies with the area's finest snack sensations. It's called uh, Vyazi Karai, so it's a deep fried potatoes. They put it in a batter that's made with wheat flour and they've added some food coloring to it. Are these Kenyan Doritos? <laughs> I guess you could say that. All right, I'm gonna. This is tamarind sauce. It's very common in the coast. Uh -huh. Adds that like tangy flavor to all this. And then we can have this. Tomato sauce. Yes. So here we go. We've got, oh, by the way, what is in the news today? <laughs> One really smart guy. New wonders can come out of the blue. So a lot of good news today. You can check it out while you eat your favorite street snacks. Oh. It's so yummy. Mm. You get the part with the tamarind? Yeah, it's a little sour. I love that sourness to it. Sweet, sour, and salty. And the chip, it's like an old fried potato. It's just kind of a little cold, a little mushy. The garlic in there is so yummy. Mm. I love these, my goodness. How many times am I going to say that? Are you hungry? Do you want some? See, let the record show. Do you want any? Okay, I know people will comment, oh, those kids, they want some, you don't feed them anything. No, they're really just curious, that's they it. They just want to see what we're doing, that's yeah, it. that's it. Mm. <laughs> Finally, gonna get a look at local village life here for the Guriyama people. Each family lives in a pod of homes with houses made from clay and topped with palm leaves. The kids are playing, the women start dinner prep, and Sam introduces me to the staple crop in this area. What is it? I'll have to dig it up to find out. Today is a special day because today we're going on a hunt for one of the most elusive creatures in the jungle, the cassava root. Right? Yeah. Cassava is the miracle plant, growing in the toughest of conditions, in poor soil with little rain. It's the most important energy source for people here. Look at this sand. You wouldn't grow tomatoes in this. This is just super sandy, silty. It doesn't need too much water because it's drought resistant. Mm. The last three months we've been having no rain and it's doing good. That's a big cassava right there, huh? Yeah. I'm told the long ones are just as good as the short ones, right? Yeah. That's right. It should be stated that cassava should not be eaten raw due to trace amounts of cyanide that must be boiled and rinsed out. The chemical compound inside can cause vertigo, vomiting, and collapse. Oh, it's very firm. I found this out after taking a bite. It tastes like a giant almond. Cool, like crunchy, chewy texture. Not chewy, like um, robust. 
luckily, I'm alive to munch cassava another day. No vertigo or sudden death here, but it is advised that next time you enter a village in Kenya, ask for the cooked cassava. We collect enough cassava for dinner. Since we are here, Sam brings me to a local liquor store, which is actually just a palm tree. You can get drunk? Yeah, very drunk. Like, you get drunk. Yeah, yeah. I've done that before. <laughs> yeah. It's one of my so favorite things. It's actually the palm sap. Some we use to cook like Mahambri, the Mandazi. Mm. Some people like drink as wine. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like that one more. Typically, the sap is collected from the cut flowers of the palm tree. A container is fastened to the flower stump to collect the sap. They even notched out the tree to make climbing it super easy. Um, I think I'm stuck. Uh oh. Can we do a trust fall type situation? I'm gonna fall back and I need six of you to interlock arms and catch me. <laughs> Some people are better built to fight the forces of gravity, but I am not. I feel like the steps could have been a little bit bigger, but that's fine. <laughs> so this is the sap, and it has just a little bit of a sour smell to it. Some people call this coconut wine, but there's no actual like coconut flavor or juice. It's very different from that. It's just kind of a sweet and sour smell inside. Cassava finds its way back to the village, where it's peeled and cut into small pieces by the women. They are the backbone of this community. And if they are the backbone, then right now, the men are the boozed up liver. <laughs> the white liquid that initially collects is non-alcoholic before it ferments. Oh. It's quite sweet. Yeah. I bet kids love this. Yeah. Most of the fresh ones we give to the little babies so that they grow strong. But after a few days, it begins to pack an alcoholic punch, fully testing a man's fortitude for unrefined spirits. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> that is a force to be reckoned with. <laughs> yeah. I already feel my headache tomorrow. <laughs> right away I drink it and my stomach is like a turbulent storm of acid. But it's very nice. But it's very nice. In this village, what is a normal diet here? Mostly the maize flour, then they cook it, like it becomes ugali, the mm, food. Yeah. Right. We have the goat, wow. the cow, chicken, the turkeys. We eat those things, yeah. From the time that you were a kid growing up here until now, what has changed in this village? Most of the people of my age did not go to school. Mm. Now the children are going to school. That's big achievement. Uh. I think so too. From locals in Nairobi to the Maasai and finally here, it's clear there's no one way of life for people in Kenya. In this particular village, there seems to be more progress each day. Kids go to nearby schools and there seems to be plenty of food, even enough to feed me. What do you call this again? This is uh, Kinu. Kinu, okay. Uh, this is Mama Kadza, the head chef for dinner today, coordinating all the cooking activities and ensuring that everything is on the right track. Right now, she's showing me how to make banana bread, or kinolo. So we've got like 28 bananas in here. The sound, oh my God. Welcome back to African Village ASMR. That's nice. So now we're putting in the maize. Pour it in a bit. Add that in. More? Okay. Enough. Enough. All right. There we go. It's getting much thicker now. So what we do after this, we put them in banana leaves. We wrap, put them in a sufria with water. We put them on fire. Then after 15 minutes, it's ready. I'm excited. Yes. And what we have here is a knife chair. You kind of stabilize it with your body weight and then you can scrape out all of this coconut meat. That is really cool. The grated coconut is later squeezed, thus providing coconut milk, which is brought to a boil with the cassava. So I noticed you have salt. Yes. So what do you sell to have money to buy the salt? The coconut tree is helping us a lot. It gives us the coconuts. Out of these branches, we get also brooms mm. that we sell. What do you need to buy that you can't get here? Maize, fish, mm. things like paraffin to see at oh, night. night. We usually put paraffin and a piece of cloth, mm. then we see. Then it's a little candle. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Now, it is hard to title a video Village Food Feast if we're only eating cassava. But then I spotted these guys. 
Here, villagers raise turkeys for nearby high-end restaurants. In fact, Mama Katza has never even tasted turkey until today. Maybe he's hitting a turkey too? <laughs> Maybe. We're going to the neighbor's house and we're gonna negotiate for a turkey. Hold on, what kind of tactics? So they're going to cut the highest price. Yeah. You're like, you slash it down by half, that's your starting point. Uh, and then maybe you meet somewhere in the middle. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. And when they quote a price, I'll be disgusted. Yeah, be like, oh. really? Are you being serious right now? <laughs> After a couple phone calls, we meet a turkey seller down the road and the highly sophisticated and tactical game of turkey negotiation begins. This is your turkey? Um, okay, this is a little wrinkled. I mean, some of these feathers are kind of like. What kind of price were you thinking? 4,000. Ooh, that's a lot. 4,000? That's a lot. I don't know, what do you think of like 2,000? No, if that cannot be, leave the turkey to join the others. I just want to say, we're, you know, we're filming this, yeah. right? If you don't go down at all, my audience is going to think I'm so stupid. How much are you going to chop off the top? A hundred. A hundred? Yeah. That's how you negotiate. Okay, sir, you got a deal. I still feel like okay. we could have knocked this down. Mamba Katsu, I brought you a turkey. I negotiated hard. I think I did a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. How much did you get this? Uh, 3,900. 3,900? That was very cheap. Are yeah. you serious? Yes. Well, how much is this usually? 5,000, 6,000. Well, 50, 60 dollars for a turkey? Mm -hmm. Is this a good size? It's a big one. A lot of meat for everybody here, right? Yes. Now uh, they are cutting the turkey into pieces. Do you keep the feet? No, we don't. You eat the Fair feet? Fair enough. I eat the feet, but we don't need to. Oh, we, we are going to keep them for you then. <laughs> I was trying to sound cool and it backfired. <laughs> Dang it. Cooking the turkey. Well, it's got to be similar to cooking chicken, right? Chop it into little pieces and stew it with a bit of water and salt. While we wait for the main course, the appetizer, banana bread. Do you have a fun name that you would call it? Hmm, like a banana ugali. <laughs> oh, yeah. Look, I got a nice bite. Let's try it out. Mm. Oh, mm. that is delicious. That's very sweet. It's the perfect marriage of maize flour and banana. Yeah, this is my first time having this because away from the coast, people don't really make this. Oh, I love it so much. It's one of my favorite things I've eaten on this trip. Like, yeah. it's so simple, yeah. but it's so yummy. I can't wait to show you guys. The camera guys, not you guys. You guys are at home. How will you eat this? You can't eat it. Come here and then you can eat it. Everyone's come from around the village. Maybe they smelled the turkey from afar. Right now she's kind of serving up everybody. We've got a bit here. We broke away for the moment. I just want to try really quick on camera before all the light is gone. Let's try out this cassava that I dug up by hand. I mean, I saw it being dug up by hand. He works hard for it. Okay, uh -huh. let's go. Mm. I love that starchy texture. Yeah, yeah. Like it takes a lot of effort to dig through it with your teeth. Mm. Cassava is one of the most underrated starches ever. The coconut on it is just like the best bread. So it's got some like fattiness from the coconut in there. Yeah, yeah. Giving it a like little bit of like oiliness. As mm -hmm. well. yeah. And then we've got a turkey. Mm, and the is best so part thick. is you have no idea what any part is because they just hack it into pieces and boil it. Sorry guys, the food shots are not so yummy today. <laughs> it's a little dark. Anyways, it's like a bit tough and chewy already. I can feel with my fingers. That's surprising, William. Amazing. It tastes exactly like chicken. <laughs> mm, it tastes like turkey to me. <laughs> it is a low dry. But my piece is quite good. Oh my God. I love it. Everyone's just pumped to be having some turkey, mm. including me. Mm, so good. This is one of the best meals I've had in recent memory. But the best part still is sharing with everyone here and learning about the local way of life. It's really good, right? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, it's all because of you. Great cook. Five out of five on Yelp. Oh. Yeah. Here in the village, people really depend on each other. There's a real sense of community, sharing the burdens of daily life in an effort to reach a brighter tomorrow together. Are we hugging? Oh, cool. Hey, nice to meet you. 
this video concludes our five video Kenya series. Be sure to watch the full playlist and let me know in the comments which country we should visit next time in Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I also want to give a huge thanks to Wendy for joining me through this insanely adventurous experience here in Kenya. Wendy, thank you so much. Thank you. And you can follow along on her Instagram shown on the page. We're estimating that it's here. Here. Also for you guys, if you're thinking about heading to Vietnam anytime soon, I highly recommend a company called OneTrip. OneTrip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about OneTrip, check out the links in the description down below. I will see you next time. A peace. All right, we've done it. This is like gang signs, man. <laughs> is that what you guys are doing right here? Yeah, it's this the kind of gang where you do this. Like deuces. <laughs> it's vicious. <laughs>